Well, I have this little mat, which I have been keeping outside. That's why it's getting kind of dirty. I've been trying to work with one of the neighborhood kids and make sure that before he goes to kindergarten, he knows these numbers by sight. So I brought it in, because you're just as important as the four-year-old next door. So of these numbers, there are two of them that have extra special properties. Do you know what they are? Hmm? Which of these numbers has more properties than the others? Now, there are some that are prime. I'm not talking about that. But there are two really special numbers, and one that's even the most special, and it allows us to be able to solve problems where the power is higher than one. You know, in the earlier in the year, we were talking about x to the first power and how you could learn the rules of what you do to one side, you do to the other, and you could solve and find out the value of x. Then I told you that we could use get more complicated by adding more variables, and we've already looked at equations with both x and y. Now we want to move on to equations with higher powers. And one of these numbers is the key to their solution. Who is it? We don't have time for you to answer. Email me, so I'm going to have to tell you. It's this one over here, the zero. Now what's really special about the zero? It's different than all those other numbers, than all the numbers in the universe, than all the real numbers in the universe. It's this, that if you have two unknown numbers, let me get two other things maybe to represent those numbers. Let's say this bird stood for one number and this elephant stood for another number that we don't know the value of. If I told you that these two mystery numbers multiplied together gave you an answer of zero. What would you know would have to be true? Think about it. The elephant times the bird equals zero. What must be true? Well, either the bird is zero itself or the elephant is zero itself, or they're both zero. You can't get the answer to a multiplication problem of zero unless one of the numbers is zero. This made it possible for the mathematicians to solve higher order equations. Who knew? The other special number is one. But the zero property is the one that really gives us the power to solve higher equations. So the first thing we're going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to look at the rules of exponents. Sometimes students get frustrated when they have to learn the rules for algebra, and they say things like, why did they make it like that? And I'd like you to say that we mathematicians didn't make it like that. The only thing we've done is try to invent notation because we're kind of lazy and don't like to write things down too often. So we invent shortcuts like x plus x plus x is 1x plus 1x plus 1x is 3x. So we invented the coefficient. But we could not say that 1x plus 4x is 2x or something like that. We had to follow the process of addition which is fixed when we started counting. So we don't make up or make it some way just to fool you. We had to learn the rules just like we're asking you to learn them and just try to make sense of them and find ways so that you can remember. We'll be looking at the thing called an exponent next. Stay tuned. Talk to you later. Bye. Trying to finesse the screen again and trying to get so that I can talk to you and have whiteboard here as well. So we're trying to finesse this poor Macintosh into things it never dreamed of doing. I was talking to you about zero and how the zero number was really special. 
and that if two numbers are multiplied together and the answer is zero, then you know that the one, one or the other of those numbers has to be zero. For instance, if we said a mystery number plus four times a mystery number minus two was equal to zero, how could that be? Here's a number, something that represents a number, and here's something else that represents a number, a mystery number, a mystery number plus four and our mystery number minus two, and they equal zero. And we want to know what is that mystery number? Well, turns out because of this special property of zero, that if we know that we have two things multiplied together and gives us a zero, that there are two possibilities. Either the first quantity, x plus 4, is really equal to 0, or the second quantity, x minus 2, is equal to 0. And this, then we can solve this. Subtracting 4 from both sides. I'm sorry, I seem to keep my voice clear. We get x is equal to negative 4, or add 2 to both sides x is equal to 2. So it turns out if we had a scenario like this, that this equation with this multiplier here has actually two separate answers. Look, if x were negative 4, this would be negative 4 plus 4. That would be 0. And negative 4 minus 2 would be negative 6. 0 times negative 6 is 0. It's true. Or, if x were 2, then this would be 2 plus 4, this would be 6. And this would be 2 minus 2 would be 0, 6 times 0 is 0, true. So it turns out that there are two answers that would make this equation true. Now this is not the form that x squared equations would come. We have a lot to learn before we can actually introduce you to the x squared equations. but. I wanted you to see that when we had two things multiplied together and the answer is zero, one or the other of those is zero. Try to tuck that away in your brain. The first thing we're going to have to learn how to do is deal with exponents. And we have a lot of preliminary work to do about exponents before we can actually go ahead and move to higher power equations. So I'm going to ask you to please be patient. We have a lot of territory to cover, and every bit of it is important. And there are lots of rules. This is where kids sometimes get frustrated, and they say, why did they make it like that? You can do it. You've got to stay with me, though. Learn about exponents. We're going to be using one of my programs to practice and make sure that we learn the rules correctly. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.